Well, if we start by talking about Chinese puzzle, it must have been a really great fun to revisit a character that you know so well. Yeah, it's fun because there is a big evolution, you know, from the, the the beginning, and it's like I think it's seventeen years. So, so it was young, you know, at twenty five, and also because the character was very immature. So, so it was fun to create a life and and. To, to 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 play him years after years and and for sure at 40 years old he's more serious more mature and and it's great to I don't know uh, maybe I, I I don't see now the first film but uh, maybe it could be interesting to see the evolution but I think it's changed it changed a lot so I, I once interviewed Ethan Hawke about the before trilogy where he plays the same character and he said that in in real life um, now who, who? Ethan Hawke you know, in, walk, yeah, okay. and he said in, in real life sometimes he thinks about what that character do, and the character, he, or basically the line between who he is and the character is almost blurred. Do you find the same with you and Xavier? Is, is it? Do, do you think he's almost like an extension of yourself? No, no, because it's really different, you know. And in the first part, it was so difficult for me to 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 love him and to understand him, and uh, so. I, I tried to create someone, and after on the set, it was a lot of fun to play him, and I felt I felt in love with him, yeah, during the shoot, and uh, but after, between the films, I don't think uh, about him, you know, I, I don't know where is he, and, <laughs> and I'm not like, what could that Xavier do, you know, I don't I don't know, it's it's it's. It, it's a fiction. It's it's a character from a fiction. So I I, I don't think about him, you know. And uh, were you? Aware and I like that, you know. Yeah. I like that. When 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 Cedric told me, okay, we're gonna do a third part, I had no expectations, you know. I, I totally let him invent and imagine what he wanted, you know. I, I wasn't say Cedric, uh, maybe he could be like this or he could be like that. No, it's it's really. In his mind, and I let him very uh, alone with his imagination. Of course, as one of the the biggest stars in in France, I mean, it's sort of inevitable that, that Hollywood will will be interested and might come calling. Uh, was Chinese Puzzle almost like a nice transition? Because it was almost, it was a French movie, but it had a an American feel to it. Obviously, set in New York and lots yeah. of English language scenes. Was it quite a nice kind of middle ground for you between French cinema and sort of Hollywood f for you as well? Yeah, I think it's 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 kind of the the power of European films, you know, to travel and and that's it's true that's a good example and and um, and we show the film in New York last week and and we saw the, the the people from Manhattan love how Cedric's uh, show the the town and and uh, but really loves you know. So it's one of the biggest point of, uh, of this strange job, you know, the, to to travel with films and and to play in another country. Yeah, because often uh, New York in cinema can be very romanticized. I mean, like you see lovely shots of the Statue of Liberty and stuff like this. But in Chinese Puzzle, the first time we see the Empire State Building, it's got a big cloud over it, and yeah. it feels much more real. Is the New York in Chinese Puzzle the New York that you can relate to? Me, Romain? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But I have a lot of memories, you know, from, from cinema also. And Cedric Clapiche doesn't talk about that in the movie, you know. But for sure, when you're working down Manhattan, you, you, you remind, it reminds you a lot of films, you know, from the 70s and the 60s. And so, so you, I have these pictures surrounded me. But, um, but uh, but you're right. I I, I really like the, the places that Cedric shoots because they are authentic. You know, in Chinatown, the characters live in Chinatown, and in Chinatown, in Manhattan, is is it's clearly a, a place where <clears throat> you have different people from different country living together, and 
and it's authentic, you know. It's not a tourist, it's not now, not yet, <coughs> a tourist place with a lot of shops. There is a lot of authenticity is there. Another film you've got uh, sort of coming out over here soon is Mood Indigo. Uh, and yeah. that's, that's a fantastic film. It's about, you know, sort of a romance, it's about romance and there's obviously friendship and loss and various themes. It, what attracted you to that project? It's Michel Gondry, you know, it's, for sure, it's, it's the imagination of Michel and, and, and because I, I, I know his work and, and, he, and his films and, and as an actor, you, you, I wanted to, to, to go inside his world, you know, and, and to, to see how he, he creates images and how, he, how he's making film because he's, it's really different than the other directors. He, he has his, his own way to, yes, to, 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 to create images. It's, it's, like, it's, it's handmade, you know? It's creating something in front of you. It must be fascinating to see it in real life, because obviously when you're shooting it, like it, pulling an eel out of the sink or chasing shoes down the stairs, that yeah. obviously can't be happening in real life. So to see it imagined on the big screen must be fantastic. It's always like that. Huh? It's in, in every scene, there was something like this, an, an invention like that, you know. So every day we were surprising. Really. Thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate Welcome. it. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you.